I'm Jim Leach, and I'll be your host for the next half hour as we discuss important issues facing Aliso Viejo with three of the candidates who hope to serve on the City Council for the next four years. Thank you for being with us. The South Orange County Economic Coalition and Cox Communications have teamed up to host a series of forums featuring local candidates on the ballot for the November 4th general election. We believe an informed electorate is a vital component of our democratic process. It's an honor to bring these forums to you. Today, we're pleased to welcome our candidates. They are David Harrington, Carmen Cave, and Mayor Phil Sonoda. Aliso Viejo voters will select two of these three candidates on November 4th. Here's the format for this forum. Each candidate will be allowed up to two minutes to make an opening statement. I will then pose a series of questions to which each candidate will have one minute to respond. At the end of these questions, each candidate will have one minute to provide a summary closing statement. Our first opening statement will be delivered by David Harrington. Thanks, Jim, and thanks Cox Communications for having me tonight. I'm running for Aliso Viejo City Council because I want to make its schools safer, its government better, and its streets safer. I served on the Orange County Sheriff's Department for 28 and a half years, and in that time, I learned the importance of public service and providing ethical service to the people of the County of Orange, specifically to the people of Aliso Viejo for six years as a patrol sergeant. Recently, the city of Aliso Viejo was voted the number one city in Orange County, and I'm proud to be part of that city voted number one. It's largely due to the residents and the businesses of the city. People like Heidi Stoops who volunteer at AFCA, the Liso Viejo Community Association. Because of Heidi, we're, we have concerts in the park, we have free movie nights, we have a 4th of July celebration that brings thousands of our residents together to celebrate Independence Day. These are the people that make this city number one. My wife, is a business owner in the city. She has been for over 15 years building a business in the city of Liso Viejo. She also volunteers to coach Liso Viejo girls softball and travel softball. She also has a nonprofit foundation in the city of Liso Viejo. People like AJ Sura, and Ted Willard, and Thad Sparrow of G2 Bikes. These are the people, the residents, and the business owners who make the city number one. I'm looking forward to serving on the city council, bringing transparency and better government to the city of Liso Viejo. Thank you. Our next opening statement comes from Carmen Cave. Thank you very much. I'm back again. Hello, Elisa Viejo. Um, I'm looking forward to serving this community for another four years. This is the community that with the leadership of the past and hopefully the leadership of the future, we are number one voted by Orange County Register people just like you. Forbes magazine also named us one of the top 25 cities in the United States to live well. We do everything very well in Aliso Viejo. You, the parents, you, the business owners, and you, the residents, make Aliso Viejo what it is to be great. I've been proud to serve on this council since we became a city, and I would like to continue to serve. We still have a lot of work to do. There's very little land left to be developed in our city, and I think it's important for us to make sure that we get what we want, the services that we need out of those last pieces of opportunity. We would like to enhance our town center. We hear that people want more restaurants, they want more places to shop. We have a plan in the works that will do exactly that, but I need your help, I need your support. 94% approval rating of this government in Aliso Viejo. That was a survey that was completed by you, the residents, and I look forward to serving you for the next four years. Thank you. Thank you. And the final opening statement comes from Phil Sunoda. Thank you. Hi, my name is Phil Sonoda, and it's my honor and privilege to serve as your mayor and a member of this city council. Uh, I, I think that uh, the city is a wondrous place, and I just would like to say that all of the things that we try and accomplish here is all for the community. Some of the things that I'd like to acknowledge is recently, the Orange County Register in its book of lists did list the city of Aliso as the number one city in Orange County. The number one city, and I believe that's something that we can all be very, very proud of. I know that I am. One of the things in the city that we should be very proud of also is our great combination of our very friendly business environment coupled with our outstanding recreational opportunities. We are an extremely financially sound city, always with a balanced budget and with healthy, healthy reserves. The, uh, one of the most important things that I feel that this city has to offer is we are an extremely safe city. 
local enforcement uh, reports recently had that the city of Aliso Viejo, for those cities that are 200,000 in population and below, ranked us as the fourth most safest city in the state of California. Again, the fourth most safest city in the entire state. It is these things that uh, really make Aliso Viejo the community that it is. One of the things that I'd like to point out is we all kind of realize what a great lifestyle we have in Aliso. Our commissioned community survey report found that 96% of those in the survey said that the quality of life in Aliso was good to excellent. 96% thought the quality of life of Aliso Viejo was excellent or good. For these reasons, I stand before you. I humbly uh, respect that uh, I serve as your mayor, and I thank you very much. Thank you, and thank you all for being here again. We'll now begin the question and answer portion of the forum. Each candidate will have one minute in turn to respond to the question posed. Our first question involves the debate over the future use of the Aliso Viejo Ranch site, a proposal to convert the property to a multi-use recreational use, perhaps to be operated by the Boys and Girls Club. Neighbors from nearby neighborhoods have expressed concern, citing traffic and other impacts of this use. They claim there's already significant traffic generated by the middle school across the street. What is your position on this proposal for the Aliso Viejo Ranch site? And let's start with Ms. Cave. Thank you very much. I think that um, Aliso Viejo, for all of its benefits, one of the few things that we do lack is a recreational facility with indoor gymnasium. Uh, we've been talking about this as a community since the mid-1990s through the Aliso Viejo Community Association. And over the years, uh, we have been trying to find partners that will help finance and run the facility. Right now, we're in the middle of due diligence on reviewing the ranch site. Um, the benefits of the ranch site is that it is linked to high schools, middle schools, and elementary schools by a path. It is right across the street from the Aliso Viejo Middle School. We would hope that the kids who would attend the center, any kind of recreation programs, would end up walking, biking, or otherwise getting to the facility, helping to alleviate the traffic. Are all the answers in? No, but we're in the middle of doing all of that through our environmental impact report and study, and we look forward to hearing those answers and answering everybody's questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Our next answer on the position on the proposal for the Aliso Viejo Ranch site, Mayor Tsunoda. Thank you very much. You know, the Boys and Girls Club and the Aliso Viejo Ranch site has been a very contentious issue for many months now. And as a, as a policy wonk and as an elected official, I like to take a very objective perspective on all of this. At this current pace, we are in the midst of what we call an environmental impact review. What we're looking at are all of the potential impacts of the use at our Aliso Viejo ranch site. What that means is that we are trying to do our best due diligence to understand what those impacts may or may not be. We look forward to the community continuing to express their uh, opinions and thoughts on the eventual use of the Aliso Viejo ranch site, and I look forward to potentially having those discussions down the road. Thank you. Thank you. We're discussing the Aliso Viejo ranch site, future uses thereof. Mr. Harrington. Thank you. Yeah, the, the Alicia Vaso Ranch site, the, the current proposal that the uh, council majority has put forward is going to cost the city about $22 million. Um, that does not include the $1.5 million by their own estimation for the uh, upkeep of that facility. Uh, we just can't do that. We don't have that kind of money. And there's no need. They've not demonstrated a need, and they have not involved the community uh, in this decision at all. Um, if had they involved the community, I've spoken to several of the residents over there, they have a much different idea on what to do with that ranch. Uh, we would much rather see this ranch become a heritage site and more in line with the educational opportunities of having a working ranch in the uh, area. It's much better for the school kids uh, than a giant gymnasium that's going to break the bank. Thank you. Next question. Another recent debate involves a potential no smoking ordinance affecting multifamily homes in the city. Where is this ordinance currently in the process and what is your position on it in light of concerns by property owners that have expressed that it's an infringement on private property rights? And we'll start with Mr. Sonoda. Great. Thank you very much. This issue has also been a very contentious one between property owners in the city and those that feel like this is a public health issue. 
Again, as a very objective individual, I would like to see a, a much better understanding of all of the impacts that this issue may have. Um, what I've come to realize is that both parties, those that are for an ordinance prohibiting the smoking in multi-use family units and the property owners, they have drawn a line in the sand in trying to come to an understanding of what those impacts may be. The last council meeting that we had, we, we tried to understand better what would be the commonalities between those two sides. And I'm looking forward to trying to figure out the best way to, to arbitrate or mediate those two sides. Thank you. Thank you. The question is about the no smoking ordinance been proposed for multifamily residences in the city. Where is the process now and what is your position on it in light of concerns by property owners? Mr. Harrington. Uh, the non-smoking ordinance was, um, uh, should never have been brought forward to the city council. There was no need for it. There was uh, no hue and cry in the, in the community for an ordinance of this nature, but they brought it forward anyway. Then they created an ad hoc committee. The ad hoc committee met. They met with all the uh, stakeholders on this issue. And the ad hoc committee found that the, um, the ordinance was unnecessary. It was too expensive to implement and should not, be, should not move forward. My understanding is that the ad hoc committee findings were accepted. So I'm completely against the non-smoking ordinance. I think it's a violation of private property rights and is completely unnecessary. Thank you. Your perspective on the potential smoking ordinance, Ms. Kay. Thank you. When you boil down the issues, what it comes to is uh, private property rights and um, violations of those property rights by others. Uh, one of the things that we were not able to assess through the public meetings that we did have on the ordinance, which is not moving forward at this time, where there's some very compelling anecdotal stories that came out about people who were suffering at the indifference of their neighbors and to the point where it was affecting their health. Um, I proposed and the council supported investigating the opportunity to appoint a city ombudsperson that would be able to work with individuals if they are having issues with their neighbors or if we could broadly expand that to people who are looking for resources and need help finding answers to their questions. While government's job is not to babysit and to tell everybody what to do all the time, I think what we could do and what we can excel at is plugging people into resources that exist and help them through some very tough times times by pointing them in the right direction and helping them to help themselves. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next question. Throughout Orange County and up and down the state for that matter, there have been growing concerns about unfunded pension liabilities and lifetime medical benefits for city employees. How, in your opinion, has Elise Oviejo managed its obligations to current and future retired civil servants while protecting taxpayers from the costly ramifications associated with these retirement benefits? What do you believe needs to be done moving forward? We'll start with Mr. Harrington. Yeah, the, un we, the city of Luis Viejo is a contract city, so we contract most of our services out, so we do not have the same issue a lot of the cities have with unfunded pension liabilities. That doesn't mean that we don't have pension liability concerns in our city. The Sheriff's Department recently uh, renegotiated their contract, and they received approximately 8.5% pay raise over the life of the current contract. That affects our, our contract with the Sheriff's Department. As that moves forward and people retire, they retire at a higher rate. We then have to look at our, our contract with the Sheriff's Department as those prices go up. And that has to coincide with the other things that the city wants to do. We have to be cognizant of the fact that our public safety costs, which occupy 51.5% of the budget, aren't gonna go down, they're gonna go up. And these renegotiated contracts, we need to be able to work with the county uh, in partnership when they negotiate these contracts so that we're not gonna take it uh, in the long run um, and, and run out of money. Thank you. We're talking about pension liability in Aliso Viejo and going forward management of them. Ms. Cave. Thank you. Uh, when we started this city and continuing to today, it was very important to us not to have unfunded pension liability. And to date, we have a very strong bottom line. We have $20 million in the bank. We have zero debt and we have no unfunded pension liability. That is because we have been committed to keeping our staff small and making sure that we take advantage of contract employees where possible. That also means trying to figure out how to make sure that our public safety costs, which are currently 51.5% and rising every year, uh, down and manageable, and that means finding alternatives to adding police to the street, which means finding places for kids to go, 
kids are um, getting in trouble uh, between the hours of 3.30 and 5.30 every day. And if we find constructive opportunities and activities for them, we can reduce our need to rely on law enforcement to keep them in line and instead raise a future generation of kids that are going to be strong contributors to the future. Thank you. Thank you. Talking about pension liabilities, Mayor Sunoda. Thank you very much. I would just like to highlight three things. One, uh, the city of Aliso Viejo is in a very, very efficient operation with only 12 full-time employees. We contract out for the majority of our services, which keeps our pension obligation uh, extremely low. Number two, uh, we had the chance to make a very big decision this year. We hired a new city manager. And there was tremendous pressure to have a salary for that individual that was not commensurate with the size and scope of our city. So I'm very proud of the decision that we made to hire an individual that kept his salary at a very responsible level given the depth of the responsibilities that a contract city has. And with that downstream impact means that there is less of a financial obligation for our pension obligation through uh, that salary amount. So those are the, the, a couple of the items that I think uh, was very responsible done by the city council. Thank you. Next question, Aliso Viejo is nearly built out, yet the state mandates that each city provide certain amounts of housing for a growing workforce. There was a debate a couple of years ago about a proposed location for affordable housing, followed by the debate over luxury apartments and a hotel at the Vantis site. In your opinion, how should the city manage future plans for housing and development considering these state mandates and inevitable pushback from those who say we don't need any more housing or hotels? We'll start with Ms. Cave. Thank you very much. Uh, the reality is that uh, the city runs on tax dollars. Uh, that's sales tax and property tax. Sales tax is generated by people who go shopping and those shops need more people to get into their shops, to spend more money, to raise the bottom line. It becomes a vicious cycle, but it also indicates a very important reality of the city and we need to be aware of what those property owners need and what they need to be successful as business owners. Uh, I think that um, the housing market is going to become the housing market and it's going to continue to change. Right now we're seeing a trend toward non-ownership, which means people are looking to rent, not buy. Uh, we've been through too many up and down cycles for some people's comfort levels and the young folks in uh, Orange County are leaving in droves because they can't find an affordable place to live. We have to be looking to the future to see how we can accommodate that brain flight from Orange County and keep young people, talented people, in our cities. Thank you. Thank you. Your perspective on workforce housing in Aliso Viejo. Mr. Sunoda. Thank you very much. I think one of the things that I'd like to emphasize is while the city is seven square miles, half of the city is designated for open space. And what that means is three and a half miles is used to accommodate over 50,000 residents in Aliso Viejo. My thought is that with the mandate from the state of California, I would look forward to talking with the state to try and understand some of those ramifications that they may not know at this particular time. I would like to go up and speak to uh, members of the legislature, members of the governor's administration, and make them understand that while seven square miles for 50,000 folks may seem like a reasonable formula, the reality of the scope and magnitude of the impact to the city, I don't think is, is quite understood up in Sacramento, and I'm willing to go up and make sure that they understand what those ramifications are. We're talking about the debate in Aliso Viejo over the difference between workforce housing and additional luxury apartment and hotels at various sites. We'll turn now to Mr. Harrington. Thanks, Jim. The, uh, one of the primary responsibilities of the city government is to make sure that they're communicating with their residents and not doing ad hoc committees every time an issue comes up and deciding these things in secret. One of the, uh, the Vantis project that included a hotel uh, is right across the street from the Renaissance. The owner of the Renaissance pumped in $85 million into our city uh, in order to build his club sport. It was a beautiful facility. They are the number one employer of the city. They were not consulted on that expansion. They certainly weren't at the table uh, during the discussions, and they should have been. He deserved to be there. Um, the density in Aliso Viejo is about 6,400 per square mile. The county average is 3,800. We need to be careful with our density uh, and not to overdo the density. Thank you. Our next question, as has been mentioned here, publications from the Orange County Register to Forbes magazine have ranked Aliso Viejo as one of the best places to live. Yet in the past few weeks, there were threats made to two Aliso Viejo schools 
causing many residents to question just how safe their children are when twice they were forced to shelter in place in their classrooms. What needs to be done to convince Aliso Viejo parents that their children are safe in Aliso Viejo considering these recent developments? And we'll start with Mr. Sunoda. Thank you very much. You know, one of the things that I emphasized was that Aliso is an extremely safe community. However, we can always do better. The incidents that took place over the last couple of weeks opened my eyes to some deficiencies in the communication which we let our residents know of potential threats. I went to a town hall meeting and heard from the residents and the parents uh, of those that were impacted by the recent events. One of the things that I believe needs to be uh, better done is a better coordination of communication between the city, the Orange County Sheriff's Department, particular in individual schools, along with the school district as a whole. Not only are the parents of these schools to be made aware of situations that occur, but I believe the community as a whole also needs to be made aware of any and all of these incidences for the, for the sake and sanctity for how they are going to react to these type of situations. Thank you. In light of recent threats to a couple of schools, what needs to be done to convince Aliso Viejo parents that their children are safe when sheltering in place? Mr. Harrington. Yeah, thanks, Jim. School safety is the number one priority of my campaign. It has been since last November uh, when I decided to run for this uh, position. The uh, number one thing we need to do as a city council is get a relationship with the Capo School District Board. Um, this past Saturday, I met with Dr. Gary Pritchard, who sits on the Capo. Uh, we met for about an hour and a half, and we discussed school safety. This needs to happen immediately. I'm not waiting seven years to get into the schools. I'll be there from day one. Uh, we need to communicate with our parents, with our teachers, with the school staff, with the Capo Board, uh, and, and it, find a better way to do things. Capital does a, an amazing job, but they only have one person who, who does the security for 56 schools in the county, and he does a fantastic job, but he can't do it alone. We need to work with them and work with the Sheriff's Department, make our schools safer. I have experience with this, direct experience with this firsthand. We've done it before, the blueprint is there, and we're gonna do it again in Liso Viejo. We're discussing safety and communications with candidates for the City Council in Liso Viejo. Ms. Cave? Thank you very much. I, I think the first thing I would tell parents is to remember that it was a hoax. And the unfortunate thing is in this electronic age, a um, random attack like this can come from anywhere. But let's look at what they actually did do and what they did right. Uh, the school district employed their procedures and it worked and no one was hurt. The Orange County Sheriff's Department through the city of Aliso Viejo was on scene, took care of it, helped out, spoke to parents, it worked. Everybody did what they were supposed to do, and the processes in place are working. The problem is that we can no longer be complacent anymore. The world has become a horrible place, and it's knocking on our door. We are doing the best we can. We are doing more, and the people who are responsible for this should be brought to justice. And I fully believe that if we stick together and we learn that we can't give in and panic every time somebody wants us to, we will give them what they want. But let's not give them what we want. Stand together and show them that we are better than that. Thank you. Thank you very much for your responses. And we now move to closing statements of one minute each. And we'll begin with Mr. Harrington. Thanks, Jim. And thanks, Cox Communications, again, for having me tonight. I really appreciate the opportunity. I'm running on basically four main topics for this election, secure schools, fiscal responsibility, a safer city, and transparent government. We need to work within the community with our government partners, like Capital Unified School District, like AFCA, the uh, Aliso Viejo Community Association. These are the people that make our, our schools the best that they are, that make our community the best that they are. I wanna make our city continue to be number one. We can do better, but we need to move forward. We can't get to where we need to be by remaining who we are. Thank you. Thank you. Closing statement from Ms. Cave. Thank you very much. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. We hear that adage a lot, but we are constantly fixing things in Aliso Viejo and working to improve things because that's what you've asked us to do. We've listened, we've improved, we've grown, and we've exceeded your expectations you are telling us that we are a really good city. You are telling us that you're happy. You are bringing us ideas for us to consider. We do our due diligence and we do a fantastic job on your behalf. 
I thank you for the last 13 years and look forward to serving you again for the next four. Aliso Viejo, you are wonderful. Remember that. You tell us that, and we love you for it. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, a closing statement from Mayor Sunoda. Thank you. My family and I love Aliso Viejo. We have been residents for over 17 years, and we love this community. We have been engaged with all types of entities from the Aliso Viejo Little League to AYSO to school functions. Uh, I think one of the things I'd like to end on is I was so proud when the City Council decided to coin the phrase, Aliso Proud. And when I walk around this community, when I visit our schools, and I hand out the Aliso Proud stickers, I can't tell you what a joy I get that the community has embraced this concept. They've embraced this team. We have so many good things to be uh, happy and uh, to be celebrating this community about. It's amazing how many people have some great ideas for this community, and I look forward to continuing to serve. It's a fantastic area, and I would thank you for your support. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we are out of time. We'd like to thank David Harrington, Carmen Cave, and Phil Sunoda for taking time from their campaigns to join us today. Other candidates were invited, but were unable to attend. This and all the forums are available throughout the month on Cox Channel 3. You can also view them via Cox On Demand in the Free Zone and on Cox's YouTube channel. We encourage you to learn more about the South Orange County Economic Coalition and its ongoing efforts to promote growth and economic vitality throughout the South Orange County region by visiting our website at www.economiccoalition.com. On behalf of the South Orange County Economic Coalition and Cox Communications, I'm Jim Leach. Thank you for being with us and be sure to vote on November 4th.